ByteDance created a new framework, UNO, for in-context generation for image diffusion model using Flux. Based on Flux, it creates in-context LoRa models for different variants of styles, controllable with different references and object references for generating images. You can see on the screen here, with different styles such as using a character's face to try on a dress, and also some garments for generating a new image styled as what they're showing here. It's also able to replicate a logo on a cup or a logo on a t-shirt. Now, this in-context image generation that I mentioned before, Alibaba, one of the biggest e-commerce companies, is doing that as well. And today, I'm going to check out the new framework, Uno, and see how it's that work. As you can see, Uno is different in terms of having a character as a whole body mask, putting a try-on reference on it, and using reference objects for the newly generated try-on image. There are pros and cons to this kind of reference to image generation, especially regarding accuracy for e-commerce virtual try-ons or designing t-shirts with logos for print-on-demand businesses. Well, the accuracy is going to be a little bit off compared to masking and doing in-context generation like Alibaba's in-context Lore does. So let's check out the Hugging Face GitHub project page first. It is able to support FP8 Flux models based on Flux as the base model and uses Uno as the LoRa models. On the Hugging Face page of ByteDance Research, they have listed ByteDance Uno where you can download the model weights. I'm going to show later how to make this runnable in Comfy UI on a local PC. But first, you have to check out the basic requirements. Right now, using Uno is going to consume 16 gigabytes of VRAM at peak times. So please bear in mind that you need to reserve that much VRAM in order to get started because Flux also consumes part of the memory. Also, with these LoRa models, it's not a small size. They can handle in-context image generation. Therefore, they require some memory. At least 16 gigabytes is needed, but I would prefer 24 gigabytes of VRAM to run this smoothly. The files for the LoRa models are in the Hugging Face repository. Click on the Files and Versions section and you'll see it here. You only need the .safe tensors files for these UNO models to run in Comfy UI. Once you download them and put them into the folder, which I will show later in this video, we're first going to check out how this performs, see how it works, and then we'll go over the installation part. In the Comfy UI layout, we're going to check out the workflow and how to do this in Comfy UI. We're basically using the sampler created by Running Hub. And at least for me, it works without any errors. This custom node doesn't require you to do the usual PIP install from a requirements.txt file, which many beginners don't know how to do. That makes things convenient. However, you do need to download the Uno models, which include Flux, the Uno Lora, the Flux VAE, the text encoder, and the text encoder UN models, as well as the VAE, all connected to the sampler. These are the main features enabling the use of these two nodes in this custom node package for multiple image references. As you can see, this input handles not just one single image, but also up to four images, as mentioned in the research paper for running this AI model. So I'm going to use an image batch multi to combine different images. For example, if I'm going to input two images, a cake as a birthday cake and a lady, and then put these two components or elements into one generated image, I will use two input counters. Therefore, we're going to input two images combined into the image list. Then, we send it to the Uno sampler. For the text prompts, it's very easy. Just mention whatever you want to include. Of course, you have to mention the elements you want to put in the image, how they are placed, the angles, placement, direction, you know, what you want the image to look like. In my previous generations here, I had another character with the same birthday cake. This time, wow, this is way off from what I thought the character would look like. This is, well, not a kid, but a young lady. But the generated image is, you know, just a kid. That's off the age compared to what I had in the reference image. Well, sometimes this happens with character age and flux. You may need to try multiple times with different settings to get the correct one. But for the cake, since it's a straightforward object element, when you refer to these elements, it's able to produce almost exactly the same rose cake 
sitting on a wooden table, following my prompts for an indoor dining room setting. Yes, it can follow those compositions. But for the character, well, it's kind of off this time. Will this new AI model perform the best? I would say no. Some aspects still need enhancement or better fine-tuning for this AI model. It needs improvement for character identification rather than just identifying the composition of the reference image of the character. As you can see here, we have the style of the character, the hair color, outfit, and so on. But when it comes to the character's age, well, that's where Flux struggles. Sometimes you have to be very specific in the text prompts in order to get good output. If you just say, young lady, that's going to generate a broad range of results. You've got to be very specific about your target to achieve better results. So I try other seed, add some more prompt, and got a few more of this. Much better this one. Okay, let's move on to another image. Next, I'm going to try another composition. A young lady, 25 years old, holding a leather handbag. Let's see how that looks in the upcoming generated image. For this composition, combining the handbag and a pink colored outfit, we tried twice. The second attempt turned out worse, changing from shorts to long pants, though the outfit's color remained the same pink. The first attempt was pretty close for the outfit with the shorts. Also, the bag ended up being off in size from what I expected. The second attempt was kind of off as well. So, I think this Uno Laura model is still in a very early experimental stage. I don't think it's reliable for production at this moment because there's no control net whatsoever. You can't control the pose of the character or how the composition of the image structure forms. That's definitely a con. When you check their GitHub page, most examples are show very short simple text prompt. Well, yes, only for their test data. It works. So far, I've been testing with other images instead of their sample data images. The next test I'm going to do is with three images right here. I'm going to use the handbag again, along with the character's face, and put those two elements into this environment. Let's see how that goes. This time, we got better results, at least when I was more specific about each element. For example, the age of the character, the size of the bag, and the island as the background helped us get closer to what I wanted, but for virtual try-ons for characters, it won't be as accurate as Alibaba's in-context Laura model. I think that one will perform better for outfit clothing try-ons. For Uno, it's more capable of handling different context references of elements and putting them together into one creative image rather than strictly following the exact same styles. It adds its own creativity since it's based on reference to image structures. So, yeah, I'd give this one a better mark for this test compared to previous tests where I hadn't optimized the text prompt much. For example, the backgrounds and the character were able to transfer in context into the new image. So it depends if you want to use it for AI video scenes where you have different elements like a character, an item, and a video scene background. You can use Uno to quickly create an image and bring that image into video production. But if you want very detailed, precise images for your e-commerce items or outfits, Uno still needs a bit of improvement and fine-tuning focused on that. When talking about e-commerce outfit try-ons, you need very precise measurements of clothing that match the character's body type and size, something Uno isn't able to handle well yet. Just like the previous examples, the pink colored outfit in the generated image isn't actually long pants. Yeah, issues like that happen in Uno, and the character's body type and size are considerable factors in e-commerce try-ons where Uno falls short in precision measurement and regeneration based on the character's body shape and size in the new image. As you can see here, even referencing just the close-up shot of the character's face, it's still not really able to reproduce the exact same face. And this example here, I use this image as the reference. As you can see, there's a big difference between the reference image and the generated character. And no mention of the second attempt. It's totally off from what I had in the reference. Also, I found that Uno performs well only for reference images and generates square-sized images. They train these LoRa models with 512 pixels. So it's not wrong, but they probably cut corners on training time because smaller dimensions 
help achieve faster results. However, it won't perform well when we have different width and height dimensions for the output image. That's another con I tested throughout this review of UNO. Other than that, the referencing of objects or elements they call and use for in-context generation, something simple like a handbag for instance, can transfer its style to the generated image. But as you can see, the texture isn't fully transferred either because I'm sensitive to these things when I see product images, especially for e-commerce, where I use AI to edit photos or videos. When I see this, I can quickly identify that it's not ready for e-commerce production. And talking about clothing like this example, it won't be able to reproduce the same outfit in the generated image or the same character where the failure rate is pretty high. Yeah, the outfit on this image is okay. It almost replicates what I have in the reference image. But the character's face and details aren't able to reproduce or transfer in context. Another example like this one, well, it's okay, not really acceptable, but still, as an AI-generated image, it follows the text prompts. And all the reference elements in the image list shows they can be followed, but not with good quality as this UNO framework generates. So far, I've tested this pretty briefly. There might be updates. I'm not sure when they'll have better fine-tuning improvements. Some people might take the time to fine-tune UNO themselves because they have the UNO script for inference and training as well. Let's say if you have a specific series of e-commerce products or specific kinds of cartoon character images, you can put that into training using this script and fine-tune the LoRa models for those specific types of images, making it more ideal for real-world performance. But in general, as you can see, all these try-on images aren't able to use the character's body shape exactly as the reference for generating the image. It's all about taking the outfit, like the sweater and pants, and generating them onto a new AI-generated character. Take the woman with a handbag, for example. This handbag, I assume, isn't exactly this large size like a gym bag. It should be smaller, not like a gym bag, right? Even the demo has some issues with the try-on or identity of the product. Yeah, that's a con for this AI model. Testing compositions of two objects into one image, they're working okay, not the best, but it's good to see that ByteDance has at least tried. That's my opinion about this LoRa model for ComfyUI. I've searched a few custom nodes for ComfyUI on GitHub right now that integrate the UNO framework and picked two custom nodes to try out. First, I checked out ComfyUI UNO from Jax Explorer, the author of this custom node, and I successfully installed it and downloaded all the model weights, including the text encoder. Now, UNO requires using the full model weights of the text encoder instead of the .safe tensors files that usually serve as one-fit-all clip text files in ComfyUI. Once I installed it, it was pretty easy. Here's the screenshot I captured during the test. When I tested it, I went to the custom nodes folder and did a git clone of the URL to download those files. Then I activated the Conda environment for ComfyUI and ran the pip install requirement.txt to install dependencies, no problems. But when I tried running it, this happened. I think PyTorch 2.6 isn't compatible with running this, so I had to try with another custom node. Therefore, I'm not going to use ComfyUI Uno by Jax Explorer. Instead, I found stable custom nodes for Uno created by Running Hub themselves. Running Hub, as I've demoed on my main channel, uses their cloud GPU to run ComfyUI and has created this custom node for Uno as well. As you can see, they're testing it with the RTX 4090, meaning they're using the full version with 24GB VRAM as the standard performance for running this custom node. To run their custom node, you have to do a few things, but the good thing is that it doesn't require a pip install from requirements.txt. They also provide a page on their cloud GPU site where you can run it on the cloud using their cloud RTX 4090 to process image generation, but we're going to try it locally on our computer. The method is the same with this custom node. You're going to use the command prompt window, go to your custom nodes folder and do a git clone of this URL. I'll provide all the steps in text format in the video description links below so you guys can follow along. Downloading the model files is a bit tricky. 
First, you need to create a folder called Uno and use this folder to download the Uno LoRa models, which are called the DIT LoRa.SafeTensors files, about 1.8 gigabytes in size. For the UNet, we have to place the Flux model files here. In my case, I'm using Flux Dev for the demo, and I named the files with the SFT extension. For the VAE, we're going to use the Flux VAE file, which is highlighted here. Point that to the models folder under the VAE subfolder. For the text encoder, we're going to create a folder in the models directory called Flux. Inside that, we're going to use the name Flux Schnell and download the Flux Snail model repo. From that repo, we only need the four folders, text encoder, text encoder 2, tokenizer, and tokenizer 2. All four folders are included, and these are going to work for our text encoder during processing using the UNO framework because we need the full model weights for the text encoder, as mentioned in the model configuration section here. You can reference from here as well. They've posted all the full files and how they're located in your model subfolders. Once you have this set up, you're able to run it without any problems at all. The only issue is memory handling. It has to be at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM to run this. So that's it for this video and I'll see you on the next one. See ya.